The Ventaxian scientific establishment was about to receive a stunning wake-up call. As one lone human threatened to upend centuries of their technological dominance with a quantum computing breakthrough that no one saw coming, Kevin Miller knew he was onto something big, really big. After years of toiling away in secrecy, having his theories mocked by the galaxy's elite researchers, the unassuming physicist finally had the key to unlocking quantum computing's full potential in his hands. But proving the merits of his creation, the quantum nexus, would be another matter entirely. Most Ventaxians still viewed humans as backwards primitives, barely worth a second glance. Even Rigel, the high-ranking noble who discovered Kevin's work, was highly skeptical at first. It took a live demonstration of the Nexus's capabilities to make the alien aristocrat realize just how game-changing this innovation truly was. As word of the impending presentation at the Ventaxian royal court spread, a sense of disbelief and unease rippled through the scientific community. Whispers turned to shouts, with many prominent researchers openly scoffing at the idea that a human could have achieved such a feat. They conspired to sabotage Kevin's moment in the spotlight, determined not to let an upstart species steal the glory. But Kevin knew this was about more than just personal validation. In convincing the Ventaxian elite to accept his quantum computing revolution, he could single-handedly raise humanity's standing on the galactic stage. With the processing might of the quantum nexus, humans would no longer be dismissed as inferior. Overnight, Earth could become a true power player in the cosmos. Of course, the flip side of the coin was too devastating to contemplate. If Kevin failed to win over the court or fell victim to the machinations of his rivals, it would be a crushing blow not just to his own ambitions, but to humanity's as a whole. The Ventaxians would take it as proof that humans truly were as primitive as they'd always assumed. Humanity might never get another chance to prove its worth. As Kevin stepped up to address the assembled alien nobles, he could feel the weight of the world on his shoulders. Everything was riding on this moment. The future of the entire human race hung in the balance, and he was the only one who could tip the scales. It was do or die for both Kevin Miller and planet Earth itself. As Kevin strode onto the stage, his heart pounded in his chest. The weight of the moment settled on his shoulders like a leaden cloak, threatening to drag him down. But he refused to buckle under the pressure. Too much was riding on this presentation. Not just for him, but for all of humanity. He could feel the eyes of the Ventaxian nobles boring into him, their gazes sharp with skepticism and disdain. They saw him as little more than a primitive upstart, daring to challenge their technological supremacy. Well, he would show them just how wrong they were. With a deep breath, Kevin began his demonstration. His fingers flew over the quantum nexus's controls, inputting a series of increasingly complex problems. The computer hummed to life, its sleek black casing thrumming with hardly restrained power. On the massive view screen behind him, the results began to appear. One by one, the quantum nexus tore through challenges that would have taken Ventaxian supercomputers weeks or even months to solve. Molecular simulations, cryptographic puzzles, computational fluid dynamics. No task was too great for Kevin's creation. A hush fell over the audience as they watched in awe. Some leaned forward in their seats, eyes wide with disbelief. Others muttered to their neighbors, their tones shifting from dismissive to begrudgingly impressed. Just as Kevin was about to launch into his explanation of the quantum nexus's core algorithms, a voice rang out from the crowd. This is preposterous. Zortax, a towering Ventaxian with pale blue skin and fierce yellow eyes, surged to his feet. No human could have achieved such a feat. This demonstration is nothing more than a fraud. Kevin felt a surge of anger at the accusation, but he forced himself to remain calm. I assure you, my work is entirely legitimate, he said, meeting Zortax's gaze unflinchingly. I am willing to submit the quantum nexus for peer review, provided you do the same with your own research. A gasp rippled through the audience at Kevin's bold challenge. Zortax's eyes narrowed, his lips curling into a sneer. But before he could retort, Rigel stepped forward. I can vouch for Kevin's integrity, the Ventaxian noble declared and I have reason to believe that Zortax's own quantum computing project has made little progress, due in no small part to his refusal to think beyond outdated paradigms. 
The murmurs in the crowd grew louder, tinged with surprise and intrigue. The king, resplendent in his shimmering robes, raised a hand for silence. It seems we have a scientific dispute on our hands, he said, his deep voice echoing through the chamber. I hereby order both Zortax and Kevin to submit their work for impartial review by a panel of experts. We shall let the facts speak for themselves. As the court session adjourned, Kevin found himself surrounded by a buzz of activity. Some Ventaxians approached him with congratulations and questions, their earlier disdain replaced by cautious respect. Others, like Zortax, glared at him with open hostility. Amidst the commotion, Kevin caught a glimpse of an unfamiliar figure in the shadows. A tall, slender Ventaxian woman watched him intently, her dark eyes glinting with a combination of interest and calculation. She slipped away before he could get a better look, but he couldn't shake the feeling that she would play a role in the unfolding drama. As Kevin navigated the swirling currents of Ventaxian politics, he knew that his quantum computing breakthrough had set events in motion that he could scarcely have imagined. With both allies and enemies emerging from the most unexpected places, he realized that the struggle to secure humanity's place among the stars was only just beginning. The days following Kevin's presentation blurred together in a whirlwind of activity. As the Ventaxian Science Council convened to review his work, alongside Zortax's, Kevin found himself sequestered in a guest chamber within the royal palace, pacing restlessly as he awaited their verdict. On the third day, a sharp rap at the door jolted him from his anxious reverie. A tall, regal Ventaxian stood in the corridor, his iridescent robes shimmering in the dim light. Kevin Miller, the alien intoned, His Majesty King Alaric requests your presence immediately. Kevin's heart thundered in his chest as he followed the escort through winding hallways of polished stone. They arrived at an ornate set of doors that swung open silently, revealing a vast circular chamber. At its center stood King Alaric, his scale-like skin gleaming with an otherworldly luminescence. Approach, human, Alaric commanded, his voice resonating through the room. As Kevin drew near, he noticed the king's eyes, multifaceted like a dragonfly's, studying him intently. The Science Council has reached its decision, Alaric stated. Your work on the quantum nexus has been deemed not only legitimate, but revolutionary. Zortax's research, on the other hand, has been exposed as deeply flawed. Kevin exhaled, relief flooding through him. But before he could respond, Alaric continued. In light of this, I am appointing you as the Royal Quantum Architect of the Ventaxian Star Empire. You will have full access to our resources and technology to further develop your quantum computing breakthroughs. Kevin's mind reeled. Your Majesty, I... I'm honored, he managed to stammer. Alaric's mouth quirked in what might have been a smile. Do not thank me yet, human. This position comes with great responsibility and great danger. Not all will welcome this change. As if to underscore the king's words, a commotion erupted outside the chamber. The doors burst open, revealing a livid Zortax flanked by a group of scowling nobles. This is an outrage, Zortax bellowed, his yellow eyes blazing with fury. You cannot elevate this, this primitive above your own people. King Alaric's voice cracked like a whip. I can and I have, Zortax. Your objections are noted and dismissed. Leave my presence at once. As guards escorted the protesting Ventaxians out, Kevin caught sight of a familiar face observing from the shadows. It was the woman he'd glimpsed after his presentation, tall, slender, with penetrating dark eyes. She nodded almost imperceptibly before slipping away. In the days that followed, Kevin threw himself into his new role. The quantum nexus hummed with newfound power as he pushed its capabilities to their limits. He developed medical simulations that could model the spread of diseases across entire star systems and navigation algorithms that could plot courses through the most treacherous regions of space. But even as his reputation grew, so too did the forces aligned against him. Strange malfunctions plagued his lab, power fluctuations, data corruption, even a small fire that nearly destroyed a crucial prototype. It was Zalara, the mysterious woman from the shadows, who helped him uncover the truth. As a member of the Science Council, she had access to information and resources that proved invaluable. The sabotage traces back to Zortax, 
she informed Kevin one evening, her voice low and urgent. He's formed an alliance with other nobles who fear your influence. You must be careful, Kevin. They will not stop until you are discredited or worse. Kevin nodded grimly. We need proof, something concrete that we can take to the king. Together they set a trap. When Zortax's agents made their next attempt to infiltrate Kevin's lab, hidden sensors captured every detail. The evidence was irrefutable. King Alaric's fury was a terrible thing to behold. In a public ceremony, he stripped Zortax of his titles and banished him from the court. The message was clear. The era of stagnation was over. The Ventaxian Star Empire was embracing a new future, with humanity as its partner. As Kevin watched Zortax being led away, he felt a mixture of triumph and unease. He had secured his position and advanced humanity's standing in the cosmos. But he knew this was only the beginning. The ripples of his actions were spreading outward, attracting the attention of powers far beyond the Ventaxian Empire. In the vastness of space, ancient civilizations stirred. Some saw opportunity in this upstart human and his quantum revolution. Others perceived a threat to the established order. As the galactic chessboard realigned, Kevin Miller found himself at the center of a cosmic storm with the fate of worlds hanging in the balance. The acrid smell of ozone filled the air as Kevin stumbled back from his workstation, narrowly avoiding a bolt of energy that scorched the wall behind him. His attacker, a lithe figure clad in form-fitting black armor, moved with inhuman grace as it closed in for another strike. Kevin, down! Zalara's voice rang out. Without hesitation, Kevin dropped to the floor. A blast of blue light sailed over his head, catching the assassin square in the chest. The figure stumbled but didn't fall, instead whirling to face this new threat. Zalara stood in the doorway, her dark eyes blazing with intensity. In her hand, she held a sleek weapon Kevin had never seen before. Step away from him, Krell, she commanded, her voice cold and hard. The assassin, Krell, cocked its head, assessing the situation. Then, with blinding speed, it hurled a small sphere towards the Zalara. The device exploded in a blinding flash of light and choking smoke. When Kevin's vision cleared, Krell was gone. Zalara rushed to his side, helping him to his feet. Are you hurt? She asked, her eyes scanning him for injuries. I'm fine, Kevin replied, his heart still pounding. But what in the name of Einstein just happened? Who was that? Zalara's expression was grim. That was Krell, a Zatian assassin. And the fact that he was here means we have a much bigger problem on our hands. She glanced around the room, her posture tense. We need to move. It's not safe here anymore. As they hurried through the palace corridors, Zalara explained in hushed tones. There's a group within the Ventaxian nobility called the Purifiers. They see your influence as a threat to their way of life. I believe they hired Krell to eliminate you. Kevin's mind reeled. But why? I've done nothing but try to help the Empire. Change is frightening to those in power, Zalara replied. And you, Kevin, represent a massive change. They reached a small, nondescript shuttle bay. Zalara quickly prepped a sleek vessel for launch. We're leaving, she announced. I'm taking you somewhere safe. As the shuttle broke through Ventax's atmosphere, Kevin finally asked the question that had been burning in his mind. Zalara, who are you really? That weapon, the way you fought? You're no ordinary scientist. She turned to him, her eyes softening slightly. I'm part of an organization dedicated to protecting visionaries like yourself across the galaxy. We've been watching you for some time, Kevin. And now, it seems, our intervention has become necessary. The stars streaked by as their shuttle entered hyperspace. Kevin stared out at the cosmic tapestry, feeling as if he'd been thrust into a whole new universe. His quantum computing work had opened doors he never imagined, but now it seemed those same breakthroughs had painted a target on his back. As they hurtled towards an unknown destination, Kevin couldn't shake the feeling that his adventure among the stars was only just beginning. The quantum nexus had changed everything, for him, for humanity, and for the very fabric of galactic society. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew there was no going back now. The shuttle emerged from hyperspace above a world Kevin had never seen before. Its surface was a mesmerizing swirl of deep purples and vibrant greens, with vast oceans that shimmered like liquid silver. 
Welcome to Lyra Prime, Zalara said, guiding their vessel towards the planet's surface. My homeworld and the headquarters of the Cosmic Guardians. They landed in a clearing surrounded by towering crystalline structures that seemed to hum with energy. As they disembarked, a tall, willowy figure approached. His skin was pale blue, marked with intricate patterns that shifted and changed as he moved. Kevin Miller, the being said, his voice resonating with an almost musical quality. I am Rylas. We've been expecting you. Over the next few hours, Rylas explained the situation in greater detail. The purifiers, led by a Ventaxian noble named Lord Zortak, saw Kevin's innovations as a threat to their power. They feared that human influence would erode Ventaxian culture and upset the galactic balance of power. But surely they can see the benefits of collaboration, Kevin argued. The quantum nexus has already led to breakthroughs in medicine, energy production. Rylas held up a hand, cutting him off. Fear is rarely rational, Kevin. The purifiers are spreading propaganda, painting you as a human supremacist bent on dominating Ventaxian society. Kevin's stomach churned. Everything he'd worked for was being twisted and used against him. So what do we do? Zalara stepped forward, her eyes gleaming with perseverance. We fight back, not with weapons, but with knowledge. Together they devised a plan. Using the Quantum Nexus's processing power, they began developing immersive holographic programs that would allow Ventaxians and humans to experience each other's cultures firsthand. It was a monumental task, compressing millennia of history and tradition into interactive simulations. As they worked, reports trickled in from Ventax. The smear campaign against Kevin had created deep divisions within the royal court. Some called for his immediate return and reinstatement, while others demanded his arrest as a threat to national security. Kevin poured himself into the project, knowing that it might be their only chance to bridge the growing divide. Days blurred into weeks as they refined the simulations, ensuring that every detail was perfect. Finally, after nearly a month of nonstop work, they were ready. Rylas used his connections to arrange a grand unveiling before the Ventaxian Science Council and key members of the nobility. As Kevin prepared to present their creation to the assembled dignitaries, he felt the weight of two civilizations resting on his shoulders. The outcome of this demonstration would shape the future of human Ventaxian relations for generations to come. He took a deep breath, stepped onto the stage, and began to speak. Speak. The words caught in his throat as alarms blared through the chamber. Red lights flashed, bathing the assembled dignitaries in an eerie glow. Intruder alert, a mechanized voice announced. Security breach in sectors 3, 7, and 12. Chaos erupted as guards rushed to secure the exits. Zalara materialized at Kevin's side, her weapon already drawn. We need to move, she hissed, gripping his arm. Now! As they fled the auditorium, Kevin's mind raced. The sabotage, the assassination attempt, and now this. It was clear the forces aligned against him were escalating their efforts. He needed to take decisive action, not just to protect himself, but to safeguard everything he'd worked for. In the relative safety of a secured underground bunker, Kevin paced restlessly. We can't keep reacting, he said, his voice tight with frustration. We need to get ahead of this. Zalara nodded, her dark eyes narrowed in thought. Agreed, it's time to call in reinforcements. Within hours, a select group had assembled in the bunker's war room. King Alaric's holographic form flickered to life alongside the physical presence of Rilas and Zalara. Kevin took a deep breath, steeling himself for what was to come. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, he began. The situation has become critical. We need a strategy to counter the purifiers before they can do irreparable damage. Ryla stepped forward, his crystalline skin pulsing with an inner light. I'm afraid the situation is even more dire than you realize, he said, his musical voice tinged with worry. Our intelligence suggests the purifiers have been infiltrated by the Yartog Syndicate. A collective gasp rippled through the room. Kevin's brow furrowed. Yartog? I'm not familiar with them. A criminal organization of the worst kind. King Alaric growled, his holographic eyes flashing with anger. They thrive on chaos and conflict. Rylas nodded grimly. Our sources indicate they're planning a massive attack using stolen quantum technology. 
Their goal is to provoke a war between the Ventaxian Empire and the Cledrons. The implications were staggering. Kevin's mind raced, considering and discarding options. Suddenly, an idea struck him. The cultural exchange simulations, he said, snapping his fingers. We can use them to counter the purifier's propaganda. He outlined his plan rapidly, describing how they could broadcast tailored quantum simulations to key worlds, highlighting the devastating consequences of conflict and the benefits of cooperation. King Alaric's hologram nodded approvingly. A bold move, but one I support. We must act swiftly to sway the moderates before the extremists can push us past the point of no return. As they finalized the details of their strategy, an aide burst into the room, face pale. Your Majesty, he gasped, addressing Alaric, we've detected a data breach. Someone's been transmitting information about this summit to an unknown location. The atmosphere in the room grew tense. Zalora's hand moved to her weapon. We have a mole, she said, her voice cold. Kevin's mind whirled. They couldn't abandon the summit now, not when they were so close to a breakthrough. An idea formed, risky, but potentially brilliant. A decoy, he said, eyes gleaming. We set up a fake summit, let the purifiers think they've got the upper hand. Meanwhile, we evacuate the real attendees to a secure location. The plan came together rapidly. As they put the finishing touches on their elaborate ruse, Kevin felt a mix of anticipation and dread. He knew the coming hours would determine not just his fate, but the future of human Ventaxian relations. The decoy operation went off without a hitch, initially. As their convoy sped through the inky blackness of space, Kevin allowed himself a moment of hope. Then the proximity alarms shrieked to life. Multiple hostile vessels approaching, the pilot announced, his voice tight with strain. They've realized the deception. Kevin sprinted to the aft section, where a hastily installed quantum shield generator hummed with power. As enemy fire rocked the ship, he worked feverishly, fine-tuning the defenses to repel each new attack. Through the viewport, he caught glimpses of the pursuing purifier ships, sleek and deadly. Their weapons flared, each blast testing the limits of Kevin's improvised shielding. How much longer? Zalara shouted from the cockpit. Kevin gritted his teeth, his fingers flying over the controls. Just a few more minutes. We're almost there. With a final bone-jarring impact, their ship burst through the last line of purifier defenses. Ahead loomed their destination a massive Ventaxian space station filled with weaponry. As they docked, Kevin allowed himself a moment to catch his breath, but he knew this was only a temporary respite. The real challenge lay ahead, in the cavernous chamber where the fate of multiple civilizations would be decided. Standing before the assembled dignitaries, Kevin felt the weight of history on his shoulders. He activated the holographic display, revealing his most ambitious project yet, a galactic shield network powered by the quantum nexus. This technology, he said, his voice steady despite his racing heart, has the potential to protect every world in this sector from large-scale attacks. But more than that, it represents a first step towards lasting peace and cooperation between our peoples. As he continued his presentation, Kevin noticed the shifting reactions in the audience. Many leaned forward, eyes wide with interest and hope. But others, like the scowling Zortak, radiated hardly restrained fury. The die was cast. Kevin had made his move in this cosmic chess game. Now he could only wait to see how the pieces would fall. Fall. The chamber erupted into a cacophony of voices. Supporters and detractors alike clamored to be heard, their arguments echoing off the vaulted ceiling. Kevin stood firm, his eyes locked on Zortak's scowling face. Suddenly, alarms blared through the station. Red lights flashed as a computerized voice announced, Security breach detected. Unauthorized access to Quantum Nexus Core. Chaos descended upon the assembly. Dignitaries scrambled for the exits while security forces rushed to their stations. Kevin's heart raced as he realized the implications. Someone had infiltrated the very heart of his creation. Zalara materialized at his side, her weapon already drawn. We need to get to the Nexus control room, she hissed. Now! They sprinted through the corridors, dodging panicked diplomats and grim-faced guards. As they neared the control room, the sounds of conflict grew louder. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, 
leaving scorch marks on the pristine walls. Kevin punched in his access code, and the doors slid open. The scene inside froze his blood. A squad of unfamiliar aliens, their scaled skin a mottled green, had overwhelmed the security team. At their center stood a towering figure, his reptilian features twisted into a cruel grin. Krill, Zalara breathed, her voice tight with recognition. The Kledrin mercenary's eyes locked onto Kevin. Ah, the man of the hour, he drawled, just who I was waiting for. With lightning speed, Krill closed the distance between them. Kevin felt a vice-like grip on his arm as the mercenary yanked him forward, pressing the muzzle of a strange weapon against his temple. Here's how this is going to work, Krill announced, his voice carrying through the room. You're going to abandon this shield project, or I'll turn your precious nexus into a smoldering wreck, with you inside it. King Alaric's hologram flickered to life on a nearby console. We don't negotiate with terrorists, he growled, though Kevin could see the fear in his eyes. Ryla stepped forward, his crystalline skin pulsing with agitation. Be reasonable, Krill. This technology could benefit all species, including the Kledrons. Krill's laugh was cold and humorless. Benefits? Power is the only currency that matters in this galaxy, and I intend to be very, very rich. As if to underscore his point, one of Krill's squad members began overriding the Nexus's safety protocols. Warning klaxons blared as power levels spiked dangerously. Kevin's mind raced. He could see the S.H.I.E.L.D. network's holographic representation flickering ominously. If the Nexus overloaded while connected to the planetary defenses, the destruction would be catastrophic. Zalara caught his eye, a silent question in her gaze. Kevin gave an almost imperceptible nod. In one fluid motion, Zalara dove for the main power conduits. Her energy blade flashed, severing the connections. The Nexus's screens went dark as emergency power kicked in. Krill roared in fury, his grip on Kevin tightening. But in that moment of distraction, Kevin saw his chance. He drove his elbow back into Krill's midsection, twisting free of the mercenary's grasp. Alarms screamed as radiation warnings flashed across every screen. The containment fields were failing. Kevin's eyes darted to the inner sanctum of the Nexus, where the quantum core pulsed with an eerie light. Time seemed to slow as Kevin made his decision. He sprinted towards the core, Krill's shouts fading behind him. With practiced fingers, he interfaced with the Nexus one last time. I'll handle this, he called out to his stunned allies. Then before anyone could stop him, Kevin sealed himself inside the radiation-flooded chamber. Through the transparent barrier, he saw Zalara's face contort with anguish. Rylas and Alaric shouted orders, coordinating the evacuation. Krill and his mercenaries, realizing the danger, fled in panic. As radiation alarms shrieked around him, Kevin's fingers flew across the Nexus controls. He input a final sequence, a audacious attempt born of theoretical quantum mechanics and sheer necessity. The world around him began to shimmer and fade. Kevin felt his consciousness stretching, fragmenting across countless microscopic dimensions. His last coherent thought was a silent prayer that his gamble would pay off. In the aftermath of the attack, the Quantum Nexus facility stood abandoned. A somber mood hung over the Allied forces as they regrouped on a nearby Ventaxian outpost. Zalara stared out at the stars, her usual stoic demeanor cracked by grief. Rylas approached, his crystalline form dimmed with sorrow. We've detected no life signs in the facility, he said softly. I'm sorry, Zalara. Kevin's sacrifice saved countless lives but at a terrible cost. Zalara opened her mouth to respond when a nearby console erupted in a flurry of activity. Strange signals pulsed across the screen, defying conventional decryption. Her eyes widened as understanding dawned. It's not possible, she whispered. But as the cryptic message drived itself, a familiar voice crackled through the speakers. Hello, my friends. Did you really think I'd leave you to face this alone? Alone? Kevin's disembodied voice filled the command center, causing Zalara to leap to her feet. Kevin, how? Where are you? She demanded, scanning the room as if expecting him to materialize. A chuckle emanated from the speakers. Everywhere and nowhere, the quantum nexus fragmentation worked better than I could have hoped. 
My consciousness is distributed across countless quantum matrices. I can perceive and interact with systems across the galaxy simultaneously. Alaric's hologram flickered to life, his expression a mix of awe and concern. Kevin, the power you now wield, it's unprecedented. And necessary, Kevin replied, his tone serious. The purifiers and cladrons pose a greater threat than ever. But with the Nexus, we can outmaneuver them at every turn. Over the following weeks, Kevin's presence became a constant hum of activity in the background of Allied operations. Quantum calculations streamed across screens, predicting conflict hotspots with uncanny accuracy. In a secure war room, Zalara stood before a holographic star map, directing a team of Ventaxian military advisors. Kevin's models show a 97% probability of purifier activity in the Cerulean Nebula, she stated, highlighting a cluster of systems. We need to deploy shield drones to these colonies immediately. As the task force mobilized, Kevin's voice crackled through the comms. Zortax supply chains are about to experience some technical difficulties. Across purifier-controlled space, logistical networks sputtered and died. Quantum disruptions cascaded through their systems, leaving extremist cells cut off and vulnerable. Meanwhile, on a neglected mining colony in the outer reaches, Engineer Tala wiped sweat from her brow as she calibrated a newly installed atmospheric processor. I don't understand, she muttered. Last week we could barely breathe, and now we have state-of-the-art Ventaxian tech? Her supervisor grinned. They're saying it's all thanks to that human, Kevin. He's using the quantum nexus to uplift worlds the Empire forgot. News of rapid improvements spread like wildfire. Colonies long marginalized by Ventaxian elites found themselves thrust into a new era of prosperity. Support for the purifier's xenophobic rhetoric waned as quality of life skyrocketed. Zortak paced in his command center, holographic displays showing fracturing alliances and lost territory. It's impossible, he snarled. How are they always one step ahead? Krill, his scaled features taut with stress, shook his head. Our operatives report quantum shielding around every target. We can't even get close. A sharp-faced Ventaxian noble burst into the room. The Crimson Sector just declared loyalty to Alaric, she hissed. We're losing our power base. Zortak's eyes narrowed. Then we strike at the source. Prepare the dimensional constrictor. We'll trap Kevin's precious nexus and cut off his control once and for all. As purifier scientists labored over arcane equations, Kevin's consciousness flickered across his distributed network. He interfaced with a heavily encrypted quantum drive aboard a Ventaxian cruiser. How's our insurance policy, Captain? Kevin's voice emanated from the ship's speakers. The Ventaxian officer nodded grimly. Nexus fragments secured and ready, Kevin. Alaric's most trusted crews are standing by. Kevin's satisfaction rippled through the quantum substrate. Excellent. Zortak's about to overplay his hand. Days later, alarms blared through Purifier Command as Zortak's trap snapped shut on empty space. The Nexus fragments had vanished, leaving only echoes of Kevin's laughter. It's over, Zortak, Kevin's voice boomed from every console. Your movement ends here. Ventaxian peacekeepers stormed the facility, led by Zalara. Her energy blade crackled as she cornered the Purifier leader. Surrender, she commanded, and face justice for your crimes against the Empire. As Zortak was led away in restraints, Kevin's presence filled the captured command center. One last piece to move, he mused. Time to show the galaxy what the Nexus can really do. Across Ventaxian space, holograms flickered to life in public squares. Kevin's voice rang out, unveiling ambitious plans for renewal and cultural exchange. The era of neglect and division is over, he declared. Together, we'll forge a future of unity and progress for all species. Cheers erupted from liberated colonies to the heart of the empire itself. Even skeptical nobles found themselves swept up in the tide of optimism. In the depths of a quantum realm, Kevin's fragmented consciousness pulsed with satisfaction and purpose. The shadow war was won, but the real work of transformation was just beginning. The cheers echoing across Ventaxian space marked only the beginning. Kevin's distributed consciousness pulsed with renewed purpose 
as he initiated the next phase of his grand design. Quantum fabricators materialized on neglected colony worlds, their sleek forms rising from barren landscapes. Within days, skeletal frameworks of homes and infrastructure sprouted from the ground. Tala, the engineer from the mining colony, watched in awe as her world transformed. It's like watching a time lapse, she murmured, observing a maglev track assembling itself at superhuman speed. Her companion, a grizzled miner named Jorik, nodded in stunned silence. Yesterday I was living in a pressure tent. Now I've got a proper house with a garden. Similar scenes played out across hundreds of worlds. Kevin's nanite swarms worked tirelessly, guided by his vast intellect. Slums vanished, replaced by gleaming towers and verdant parks. Clean energy grids hummed to life, powering newly built schools, hospitals, and cultural centers. In orbit above New Ventax Prime, a massive station took shape. Its crystalline structure pulsed with quantum energy, forming the heart of Kevin's most ambitious project yet. Welcome to the Xenosynthesis Nexus, Kevin's avatar announced to a gathered crowd of dignitaries. His holographic form gestured to the shimmering portals lining the chamber. Step inside and experience firsthand the rich tapestry of our galactic cultures. Zalara was the first to enter, her form shimmering as she passed through the quantum barrier. She found herself standing in a perfect recreation of ancient Earth, surrounded by the bustle of a Roman marketplace. Remarkable, she breathed, running her hand along a stone column. The tactile feedback was flawless. A human in a toga approached, smiling. Salve, citizen. Would you care to sample our finest garum? Zalara's initial confusion gave way to understanding. This was no mere simulation, but a living, responsive environment crafted from the collective knowledge of countless civilizations. As word of the Nexus spread, popular culture embraced its potential. Holodramas featuring human and Ventaxian co-stars became overnight sensations. Culinary fusion restaurants popped up in every spaceport, blending Earth cuisine with exotic alien flavors. But not everyone celebrated this new era of unity. In a hidden bunker on a distant asteroid, Admiral Marcus scowled at the reports flooding his screens. Look at this, he spat, gesturing to footage of humans and aliens mingling freely in a Nexus-built metropolis. We fought and bled to secure humanity's place in the stars, and now this traitor Kevin hands it all away. His aide, a scarred veteran, nodded grimly. The purifier remnants are ready to move on your order, sir. We can strike the primary Nexus nodes within the hour. Marcus's eyes gleamed with cold dedication. Initiate Operation Reclamation. It's time we showed the galaxy that humanity will not be relegated to a supporting role in our own story. Alarms blared through Zalara's command center as reports of simultaneous attacks flooded in. She barked orders to her security teams, coordinating a response. Kevin, are you seeing this? I am, Kevin's voice resonated through the room. Marcus has made his move earlier than anticipated. Zalara, I need you and Rylas to secure the primary sanctum. I'm implementing emergency protocols. As Zalara and Rylas raced to Kevin's innermost sanctuary, they encountered pockets of fierce resistance. Human extremists fought alongside embittered purifiers, their unlikely alliance born of shared resentment. We're too late, Rylas exclaimed as they reached the core chamber. The quantum matrices pulsed erratically, their harmonies disrupted. Kevin's avatar flickered into view, his expression serene despite the chaos. Not too late, my friends. Simply time for a new strategy. Before their eyes, the Nexus core seemed to implode, collapsing into dimensions beyond normal perception. Kevin's form stretched and fragmented, his consciousness dispersing into the subatomic realm. What have you done? Zalara asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Kevin's response came from everywhere and nowhere at once. I've moved beyond Marcus's ability to control or contain me. Now, we end this. Across the galaxy, shimmering mirrors of quantum energy unfurled in the upper atmosphere of countless worlds. Kevin's avatars manifested simultaneously, each one addressing vast crowds. Citizens of the galaxy, the avatars spoke in unison, their voices resonating with conviction. We stand at a crossroads. Will we embrace a future of collaboration and mutual growth? 
or will we succumb to the fears and prejudices of our past? As Kevin's words echoed across the stars, Marcus found his carefully laid plans unraveling. Rebel cells reported mass defections as Kevin's message of unity struck a chord with even the most hardened extremists. It's not possible, Marcus growled, pounding his fist on a control panel. How is he everywhere at once? The answer came in the form of a shimmering distortion in the air before him. Kevin's avatar coalesced, regarding the Admiral with a mixture of pity and grit. It's over, Marcus, Kevin stated simply. Your co-conspirators are already contained. Surrender now and we can avoid further bloodshed. Marcus lunged for his sidearm, only to find his hand passing through it as if it were a mirage. He stared in horror at his own body, realizing too late the extent of Kevin's quantum manipulations. What have you done to me? he demanded. Kevin's expression remained impassive. I've given you a choice. Accept the new reality we're building, or face the consequences of your actions in quantum stasis. As Marcus was led away in quantum-phased restraints, Kevin turned his attention to the monumental task ahead. The Nexus hummed with potential, ready to usher in an era of unprecedented cooperation and advancement. Zalara approached Kevin's primary avatar, her eyes filled with a mix of wonder and apprehension. What comes next? she asked. Kevin's form shimmered, hints of countless realities visible just beneath the surface. Now, he said, a smile playing at the corners of his mouth, we build the future. Kevin's consciousness resonated through the quantum substrate, his influence spreading across the galaxy like ripples in a cosmic pond. The nexus hummed with potential, its tendrils reaching into the fabric of reality itself. It's time to show the universe what true cooperation can achieve, Kevin's voice echoed through the command center. Zalara and Rylas exchanged glances, a mix of excitement and trepidation in their eyes. Within days, joint human Ventaxian research teams materialized on worlds once ravaged by conflict. Quantum fabricators word to life, transforming desolate landscapes into thriving metropolises. On the colony of New Harmony, Dr. Alara Singh watched in awe as a barren valley sprouted gleaming towers and verdant parks. It's like watching evolution in Fast Forward, she murmured, her hands flying over a holographic interface. Beside her, the Ventaxian scientist Zixala nodded, his tendrils vibrating with excitement. The Quantum Entanglement Network just came online, Zixala reported. We're now linked to research hubs across 17 sectors. A chime sounded and a holographic message materialized. Kevin's avatar smiled at the assembled team. Excellent work. Your breakthroughs in quantum fabrication are already being implemented on frontier worlds. But we can't rest yet. Reports are coming in of unrest in the Clidron Empire. The mood in the lab sobered. Dr. Singh's brow furrowed as she pulled up news feeds. It seems our success is causing quite a stir, she said gesturing to footage of Kledrin protesters marching through crowded streets. Kevin's avatar nodded grimly. Supreme Admiral Kralk is using our advancements to stoke fears of human domination. We need to tread carefully. Months passed and tensions simmered. In the resource-rich Drekken cluster, Kevin's integration programs clashed with growing anti-Ventaxian sentiment. On the mining world of Drekkar Prime, Human engineer Thomas Chen found himself caught in the crossfire. Get down, he shouted, pulling his Ventaxian colleague behind a stack of crates as energy bolts sizzled overhead. Across the spaceport, a group of masked assailants advanced, their weapons trained on the cowering dock workers. This is Voktan territory now, the lead attacker snarled. All Ventaxian collaborators will be... His words were cut short as a shimmering field enveloped the group the attackers froze in place, caught in a localized quantum stasis bubble. Kevin's avatar materialized, his expression stern. I warned you this would happen, Alaric, he said, addressing the Ventaxian emperor through a quantum link. We need to act fast before this powder keg explodes. In the gleaming halls of the Ventaxian imperial palace, Emperor Alaric paced nervously. What do you propose, Kevin? We can't allow the Kledrin to continue these provocations. Kevin's avatar smiled enigmatically. We'll give them exactly what they fear, a showcase of human Ventaxian cooperation. But this time, 
will extend an olive branch. Prepare for a diplomatic summit on Drecker Prime itself. As preparations for the summit began, Kevin's consciousness scanned through quantum probabilities. His attention focused on a young Kledron scientist named Thafna, whose published theories on xenoharmonics aligned closely with Kevin's own philosophies. In a quantum-fabricated conference center on Drecker Prime, delegates from a dozen worlds gathered. The air crackled with tension as Ventaxian diplomats eyed their Cledron counterparts warily. At the center of it all stood Kevin, his avatar projecting an aura of calm. Friends, allies, and honored guests, Kevin began, his voice carrying to every corner of the room. We stand at a crossroads. The path of conflict leads only to destruction. But together, we can forge a new way forward. As Kevin spoke, a commotion erupted at the entrance. A group of figures in stealth suits burst in, energy weapons raised. Death to the human puppet master, one shouted, taking aim at Kevin's avatar. In that instant, Thafna leapt forward her scales shimmering as she placed herself between Kevin and the attackers. The energy bolt meant for Kevin struck her squarely in the chest. Chaos erupted. Ventaxian guards exchanged fire with the extremists, while Cledron Imperial forces moved to engage, unsure of who to target in the mayhem. Kevin's avatar flickered, then expanded. Tendrils of quantum energy lashed out, enveloping combatants on both sides in shimmering stasis fields. The din of battle faded, replaced by an eerie silence. Enough, Kevin's voice boomed, resonating with an otherworldly timbre. This ends now. As medical teams rushed to Thafna's aid, Kevin turned to the assembled delegates. We will have peace, he declared, his gaze sweeping the room. But first, we must have truth. Quantum drones materialized, their sensors probing the very fabric of space-time. An impartial investigation will reveal the source of this violence, Kevin continued, and those responsible will face justice, be they Ventaxian, Cledron, or human. In the days that followed, Kevin's drones uncovered a web of conspiracy stretching from the lowest smugglers to the highest echelons of the Cledron military. Evidence mounted against Supreme Admiral Kralk, his xenophobic rhetoric exposed as a mask for his own power grab. As Kralik was led away in quantum shackles, Kevin turned his attention to the wounded Thafna. Her act of sacrifice had become a rallying cry for moderates throughout Cledron space. The old guard has fallen, Kevin mused, watching as Thafna was sworn in as the new Supreme Admiral. But the real work of building lasting peace has only just begun. Begun. The monumental challenge of uniting disparate species across the galaxy loomed large, but Kevin's quantum infused consciousness pulsed with grit. We need a bold initiative, Kevin announced to the assembled leaders. His avatar flickered, revealing glimpses of countless alternate realities. Something to showcase the true potential of our alliance. Emperor Alaric leaned forward, his scales shimmering with interest. What do you propose, my friend? Kevin's form coalesced into a holographic blueprint. The Nexus Arc, a mobile quantum Nexus platform capable of visiting underdeveloped worlds across the galaxy, will bring enlightenment and uplift to those who need it most. Murmurs rippled through the assembled dignitaries. A Ventaxian noble, his crest flaring with agitation, spoke up. And who decides which worlds are underdeveloped? This reeks of human imperialism. Alaric silenced the protest with a raised hand. Kevin has proven himself time and again. If we truly believe in our alliance, we must trust in his vision. Months passed in a flurry of activity. Quantum fabricators hummed day and night, assembling the colossal structure of the Nexus Arc. Human engineers worked alongside Ventaxian scientists, their combined expertise pushing the boundaries of what was possible. On the day of launch, Kevin stood on the Arc's command deck, surveying the assembled crew. Humans and aliens alike gazed back at him, their faces a mix of excitement and apprehension. We embark on a journey not just across space, but across the boundaries of culture and understanding, Kevin declared. Our first destination, the Grelvian system. The Nexus Arc slipped into quantum space, re-emerging near the galactic core. The Grelvian system's star burned fierce and bright, its harsh light falling on a world gripped by oppression. Thafna, now Supreme Admiral of the Cledron, joined Kevin on the observation deck. The Lorix, she said, 
her voice tinged with sadness. A species with so much potential, crushed under the heel of tyranny. Kevin nodded, his avatar shimmering with hardly restrained energy. We can't intervene directly, but we can give them the tools to liberate themselves. Over the following weeks, the ARC systems worked tirelessly. Quantum data packets slipped past the regime's sensors, carrying encrypted knowledge of advanced physics and social theory. Kevin's consciousness spread through hidden networks, nurturing the seeds of rebellion. In the depths of Aloric City, a group of resistance fighters huddled around a makeshift quantum terminal. Their leader, a grizzled veteran named Krell, marveled at the information flooding their screens. It's like a veil has been lifted, Krell whispered. We see the world as it truly is, and how it could be. As unrest spread across the Lorix homeworld, Kevin's forces provided covert support. Quantum shields deflected regime weapons, while tactical data feeds gave the rebels a crucial edge. From his command center on the Ark, Kevin watched the revolution unfold. Beside him, Alaric's hologram flickered with concern. You're walking a dangerous line, my friend. The galaxy is watching. Kevin's expression remained resolute. Sometimes, to uphold our principles, we must be willing to act. The Lorix dictators, sensing their impending defeat, launched a bold strategy. Biogenic weapons detonated across the planet, ravaging entire continents. Horror gripped the Ark's crew as they watched the devastation unfold. Kevin's avatar crackled with terrifying fury. In an instant, his consciousness reached out enveloping the regime leaders in an unbreakable quantum stasis. What have you done? Alaric's hologram demanded. Kevin turned, his form rippling with otherworldly energy. What was necessary? And now we rebuild. The Ark's systems engaged, quantum energies pouring onto the ruined world below. Molecule by molecule, a new biosphere took shape, defying the laws of nature itself. As news of Kevin's actions spread across the galaxy, reactions were swift and divided. On the Ventaxian homeworld, crowds gathered in the streets. Some chanted Kevin's name in adoration, while others burned effigies of the human alpha mutation. In the Imperial Palace, Alaric faced a grim delegation of alien ambassadors. Their ultimatum was clear. Reign in Kevin or face the consequences. The Emperor's heart's heavy, he opened a quantum link to the Ark. Kevin's avatar materialized, his expression already knowing. My friend, Alaric began, his voice thick with emotion. I'm sorry, but I must ask you to cease your operations. The risk to the Empire is too great. Kevin's form pulsed with barely held back energy. I cannot, Alaric. What we've started is too important to abandon. Then you leave me no choice. Alaric said, his scales dulling with sorrow. Kevin of Earth, you are hereby disavowed by the Ventaxian Empire. For a moment, silence hung between them. Then Kevin's avatar began to fragment, pieces of his consciousness scattering across dimensions. I understand, old friend, Kevin's voice echoed. But know this, I will continue my work. The universe is vast and injustice cannot hide forever. As the Nexus Arc vanished from sensors, a final message pulsed across the galactic network. The shackles of bias, tradition, and fear must be broken. I am no longer bound to the old paradigms. Expect me. In the wake of Kevin's departure, the galaxy held its breath. Some spoke of him as a savior, others as an existential threat, but all knew that the age of humanity's cosmic adolescence had come to an end. Aboard the Nexus Arc, now adrift in the vast expanse between galaxies, Kevin's consciousness expanded. New horizons beckoned, promising challenges and discoveries beyond imagination. The journey he knew had only just... You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.